This is Mr. Holsey of 8 Squared's Efficiently Understood Science, and today we're going to discuss the theory of continental drift. Now let's start off with a very simple question. Can you name this planet? If you look closely, I'm sure you can figure it out. Now, as imagine, you've already guessed this pretty easily. But if you said Earth, then yeah, you're absolutely correct. But this is the planet Earth nearly 300 million years ago. But it looks extremely different than the planet we have today. So what is the big change here? Why did we go from that to this? How could it look so different back then than it does now? Well, the answer lies in the theory of plate tectonics. So plate tectonics is a theory that states that the crust of the earth is broken up into large plates that float on top of the mantle. And you can see over to your right a, gra a, a image that shows the major plates of the earth's surface. These are continental plates. And these are constantly shifting and because they're floating on top of the mantle. And over time, that Earth that we had seen is actually going to change, as we can see in the video right here. Going from the supercontinent of Pangaea to what we have today. We can see those familiar continents. Uh, North America, Europe, Asia, Africa. Um, by the way, this right here is India, and I barely got it on there in time. Uh, South America, Australia, and Antarctica. And so this, over the course of millions of years, is going to reshape the surface of the Earth. And when I say millions of years, that's because the average movement of the Earth, um, of the Earth's tectonic plates, is about two centimeters per year. So only about two centimeters per year. And so this is a very slow process, but a very powerful process that has shaped the face of our planet. Now, it's believed that tectonic plates are moved by several different forces, not just inside of the Earth. The rotation of the Earth can cause the movements of plates as we spin. Uh, tidal forces of the sun and moon, we already discussed how they can affect the tides of our planet gravitational pull from within our Earth, but most importantly, the convection currents in the mantle. Now, if you're not familiar with convection currents, it's a very simple piece of thermodynamics in that air that is hot will rise up and air that is cooler will fall. But it isn't limited to just air. This also occurs in water as well as the mantle material beneath the crust. And so this mantle material will, as it heats up, material that begins closer to the bottom of the, of the mantle near the fluid outer core will rise up because it's heated up more than the surrounding material. And as it rises, it's going to begin to cool. And as it cools, it begins to fall once again, becoming heated up. Now, this process of rising and falling is going to actually drag the crust along with it, causing this to spread apart and move. 
And so as this happens, a way of thinking about this is like your local grocery store. You place items on a conveyor belt that takes it to the, the checkout person. And that, you know, that conveyor belt is dragging those items along and it uses a motor to pull the conveyor belt with it. And so you can think of the heat of the earth, of, of this mantle material, as the motor that drags the crust along with it, causing this change in the earth over time. Now, how do scientists know that there has been changes in the earth? Well, we can look at a lot of different factors and we're going to get to those in just a minute, but we can see how the earth changes over time, including creating ancient seaways uh, that give us different fossils. Now, the theory of plate tectonics, or continental drift, was first introduced by Alfred Wagner in the early 1900s. And the theory explains how Earth's plates form and move, but it also explains how these plates interact, producing volcanoes, mountain ranges, earthquakes, and other features of the ocean floor. So earthquakes are actually a direct occurrence caused by the movement of these plates. The formation of volcanoes are also formed by these plates being pushed under one another. And so his suggestion was that the, the earth wasn't one big solid crust, but rather it was broken up almost like a puzzle and that we could put those pieces together to see how the Earth has changed over time. So there's several pieces of evidence for plate tectonics. The first piece is probably something you've noticed when looking at a map or a globe, that the continents fit together like a puzzle piece. which we can see a very general demonstration right here, how South America can easily fit right there into Africa, how North America can fit into Africa and Europe, suggesting that these at one point were joined, were close to one another and broke apart. But we could say that that's a coincidence. And so we needed further evidence, stronger evidence. The second piece of evidence is that the same fossils were found where these pieces could fit together. So here is an example of utilizing fossil evidence to determine plate tectonics. So for example, we have this lizard creature right here that's approximately about three meters long. Now, when I say the same fossils, it's not uncommon to find fossils of an organism that are similar to one another on different continents. We see that today with different bird species. But what we're talking about is finding evidence of fossils that are the exact same species, continents apart. And if we were to line up where we find these fossils, like for example, in this lizard here, we found them along the coast and deep into South America but we also found them in the areas that we could line up with Africa.
The Lytosaurus, right here, was a Triassic land reptile. And we found evidence of it spanning Africa, Madagascar, India, and in Antarctica. The Mosasaur, a freshwater reptile we find in South America and Africa. We even find them in North America as well. This idea of finding these kinds of species in Antarctica is, in, is actually kind of crazy when you think about it. When we think of Antarctica, we think of ice, cold, you know, some penguins, but not anything too crazy. One of the things we found is plant life, that tropical plant life in things like South America, Africa, Madagascar and India, which that makes sense. Even Australia would make sense. But we found evidence that Antarctica once supported tropical style plants as well as lush forest and dinosaurs, suggesting it couldn't have always been at the bottom of the world. In our third major piece of evidence, is that we find similar landforms on each continent. And I'm not just saying like different continents also have mountains. What I'm saying is that we find landforms that were once connected. For example, the Appalachian Mountains in the United States. These mountains go across the United States on the eastern seaboard and up in the Canada. Well, these mountains, we also have uh, the Caledonian Mountains in Scandinavia and some mountains on the British Isles. Now, in this image, they do not look like they are the same mountain range, but in fact, they are. Not only do they share similar minerals, but they share similar geomorphologies. In other words, how they were formed in the first place. And if we were to put these together like a puzzle piece with the idea of continental drift in mind, we would see that they quite clearly line up in a, mount, in a perfectly normal mountain range. And so, over time, this mountain range was ripped apart by the forces of the Earth. This has been Mr. Holsey of H Squared Sufficiently Understood Science. I hope you enjoyed our tutorial on the theory of continental drift. Remember to hit the like, share, and subscribe button and click the bell notification to know whenever we post a new tutorial. All right, well, we'll see you next time.